Good morning, Phil Russell here with Global Awakening Fellowship and Institute. Breaking news. We're going to share with you this morning breaking news of what God is doing all around the world. We, we bring stories and news events that happen in the body of Christ all around the world, and we hope that this is a encouragement to you and uplift on a Saturday morning here at nine o'clock, where that uh, if you're interested in what God's doing in the church and in missions, that we just bring you some uh, things that are happening from different perspectives, uh, from different ministries and uh, missions agencies around the world. And I get so excited as I prepare for uh, these programs because as I dig into it, as I do some research, and I look at what other people are saying, and I share that with you, it's, it's such an enlightening and encouraging time. Uh, in the midst of that, there's all this terrible, chaotic news around us, but in the midst of it, we, the church, God has called us to function. Now, as I share with you this morning, I want you to uh, just uh, uh, sit there, or if you're uh, listening uh, later on, just, just let Holy Spirit speak to you. And I'm going to give you some reality news. That's breaking news. But uh, I have some friends in Pakistan, India, Nepal, and they're engaged in ministry. But just uh, three or four weeks ago, extremist murder candidate attack homes and offices in lead up to Pakistan vote. It was quite intense. I talked to a brother that that was there, and uh, he said it was very, very intense. And violence was spiking ahead of that nationwide vote. And the news on about four Wednesdays, three Wednesdays ago, the Islamic State shot and killed one election candidate as he campaigned. It's the second murder of its kind since January the 10th. And those kinds of news reports are terrible. We don't like to hear them, but it's a reality of what's happening in our world today. Uh, a brother with Global Catholic Ministries said this, it's a pivotal time in Pakistan because of the election that takes place next week on the 8th. And... This gospel worker says it's a pivotal election. Well, let me pause there for a minute and let's say here in America, we're saying the same way, same thing as gospel workers. This is a pivotal election we're facing this fall. So we here in America are not exempt from the same tensions, burdens, challenges in other places of the world. He said it's a tense time. The country's on edge. Now, this is the reality of the world we're living in right now. There's a lot of conflict. There's a lot of things going on. But we have to understand that in the midst of this, there is some good news. I love this. And I've got this uh, circle and outline here because I believe it's good news and break news, breaking news. Some of the officials there are saying, look, don't mess with us. We have nukes. I heard that on major news outlet the other day. Pakistan was saying, hey, we got nukes. Well, and then others were saying, we're not, a, we're not afraid to fight back. We'll, we'll do whatever. But here is the breaking news. That kind, what I just shared with you, that's common. That's happening all around the world. But here is what this gospel worker is saying that's happening right now. 
the Lord is moving despite chaos and uncertainty in Pakistan. Recently, he said we were praying and two Sunnis came to our house, gave their lives to the Lord, and were baptized. Breaking news. You've heard all of that bad news about the Sunnis. You, you've heard about Iraq. You've heard Afghanistan. You've heard all, of, all the bad stuff. But here these gospel workers are at their house. They're praying, and two show up and receive Christ as their Lord and Savior in the midst of all of that chaos. Isn't God good? Isn't God great? Isn't God the one who provides opportunities for we, his people, when we put him first and we look upon the world as he looks upon the world and we look at God's heart, God's heart is redemptive and he wants all men and women He wants them drawn to himself, and he uses you and I to draw them to him. And this gospel worker says, we led them to the Lord, and they were baptized. Why were they, why did they come looking for these gospel workers? Well, let me tell you why. This is breaking news. This is not something that happened last month or last year. This is something that just happened happened in recent days. Listen, they were having visions of angels. Angels were visiting these Sunnis and they felt God called. They felt called and directed by God to find these gospel workers. Isn't that miraculous? Isn't that like God? God is so concerned about the lostness of men and women and children that he sends angels, praise God, and they start looking for these gospel workers. They find their house, praise God. Sounds like some New Testament activity to me. It it, it sounds to me like Cornelius' house, some of those other homes in the days after the day of Pentecost when the church was birthed. Sounds like some New Testament activity taking place right here in the midst of all of this chaos. Great news, breaking news. He said, we're having these visions of angels and they were under persecution from with their own, within their own faith. So they came in desperation, Mark said. And he said, they said, if I can have anything today, I need Jesus. See, religion wasn't the answer. A, 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 a form a a legalistic, a works-oriented, that it, it, it had placed them in despair and they were in chaos. But angels visited them and directed them to the gospel worker's house. And they said, if I can get anything today, if I can have anything today, I need Jesus. <clears throat> Think about that. What if somebody shows up at your house on this Saturday morning? Maybe it's somebody you've been praying for, intercessory prayer. Maybe it's somebody you've witnessed to in recent days. What if they knock on your door? What if you get a text or a phone call and say, can I come to your house today? Can I come and meet with you today? I just need Jesus. I just need Jesus. Breaking news. The good news is this. 
that when people hear the good news by you or even by angels, that's breaking news because they come and they say, I need Jesus today. This report says they gave their lives to the Lord and he said, we're discipling them. We need to pray for an increase of this across the entire Middle East because it's a season of harvest. In the Middle East, the 1040 window, I'm seeing it, I'm hearing it, I'm reading more reports. The, the more research we do, the more we're finding that it, underneath all of this chaos and all of these wars, God is at work. That stirs me so deeply. We need to pray for an increase of workers. I love what he said as he sums up this report. He said this, we're going to make disciples amid the chaos. I begin dealing with this word chaos and chaotic time just about eight or nine weeks ago as I was studying and praying, and, and, and the Lord began to deal with me about this. And then as I began to prepare and, and, and do some research, I, I began to see and I began to hear this word chaos and chaotic uh, more and more, and we're seeing and hearing it everywhere. We are even experiencing it. But here's the breaking news on this Saturday morning. We're going to make disciples amidst the chaos. Oh, hallelujah. I hope you get excited about that on this Saturday morning. This is a day the Lord has made and we're gonna be glad and rejoice in it because in the midst of the chaos, we're gonna make disciples. Can I get an amen? Thank God for that report this morning. Let me share one more report with you this morning. And uh, it's, a, it's a challenging report, but there's, it's, it, there's a lot of good news in it. And uh, it's, it's the violence against Christians in Nigeria. It, it's continuing. It's been happening. There's been chaos there for, for many, many years. But in 2023, Nigeria was the deadliest place to be a Christian in the world. And it doesn't seem to be changing. And uh, in, in January 2024, at least 30 Christians lost their lives, an average of one Christian per day. And I mentioned that, I think, two or three weeks ago, uh, another report that was sharing that that. Uh, uh, report, but uh, in the midst of that, it, in the midst of all of this persecution, we need to understand this, that God is there with his people. Christians make up 46% of Nigeria's uh, population, and that's no small number. I've got friends there, friends that are in ministry there. But the violence is growing more intense. And uh, there's, there's lots of activity. They're trying to get the international community to, to look at what's going on and to see what's going on. But I just mentioned that to remind us that we need to pray for Nigeria, we need to pray for the church that's, that's well, but it is becoming more persecuted. And we need to pray that God would give Nigeria leadership that would be beneficial and favorable to the kingdom of God, to the church there. And uh, let's just press in in prayer. Let's be willing to Remember them as, as we often do because it's 
the church of Jesus Christ, there are brothers and sisters, and the breaking news of Nigeria is that it's chaotic, it's persecuted, and being more persecuted, the breaking news is that God is there with them, and he's sustaining them, and the church is growing in spite of the persecution. I want to close today's program with, with this, and I think it's so important. And the Bible commands us to pray for Israel. But here's some breaking news. Just from yesterday, Israelis seek answers amid the pain of war. Israelis are seeking answers amidst the pain of war. It's, it's sad what is happening. This war that began five months ago when Hamas militants raided Jewish communities in southern Gaza. At least 1,200 were killed. They lost their lives. And they took roughly 250 hostages. And they're still holding at least 100. And there's a lot of upheaval in the Jewish community. And there's so much trauma that is happening. Marriages need counseling. Children need counseling. So many of them saw their, their parents, their friends, their relatives, their co-workers. They saw them killed. They were murdered right before their eyes. And so there's all kinds of questions. But in the midst of this, we have Americans in, that are hostages, and we're not hearing anything about them. We need to pray that they'll be released. We need to pray that the Lord's will would be accomplished and that his purposes will be accomplished in this evil, evil situation. But here is the breaking news out of all of that. Many, many Jewish people are believing in God and even, and even turning to Jesus as Savior and asking questions. That is breaking news. As sad as the situation is, God's working and both sides are open to faith in Christ. Even the enemy, even on the other side, there are manifestations of God touching people. This openness is significant because many Jews in Israel, because of the Holocaust, terrorist attacks over the decades and all the wars, have abandoned their belief in God. They've become agnostic. But that's changed since October. Something is changing. There's a, the dyna dynamics have shifted, and they are believing in God. They're asking about God. They're even turning to Jesus as Savior. That is breaking news. Think about it. God takes the worst situation, the most chaotic situations, and he moves through his church by the Holy Spirit and by angelic visitations and other supernatural interventions. He awakens the heart of people that have been hardened against him. But in the midst of chaos, 
comes forth the breaking news that Jews and others amidst the war on all sides are turning to Jesus. I close this morning with this. I just got a message from a ministry there in southern Lebanon where all of this, a lot of this activity is going on with Israel and Hamas. And there's a ministry there that's dealing with the children. And they're loving on the children. And, 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 and the ministry is called A Heart for Lebanon. And more than 90,000 people in Lebanon have been displaced. But here the church is loving on this ch these children and these families and they're sharing Jesus. And the breaking news is they are receiving Jesus. So on this Saturday morning, I pray that you've been encouraged. I pray that you've been enlightened and you've been challenged. You know what? God is moving in these chaotic times. So have a great morning. Be active in your church. Support your pastor. Be at worship in the morning and go in worshiping, anticipating hearing the word of God and walk in your calling so that there be more fruit in the kingdom of God. Have a great day.